Welcome to the 11th Cambridge International Conference on Evidence-Based Policing with the theme of using research to improve police outcomes. That was, of course, the basic idea 20 years ago today when the first paper on evidence-based policing was published by the Police Foundation in Washington, D.C. And in the tradition of um, Gareth Southgate, who had an opportunity to say something about an important event on Saturday. Um, we don't want to rub it into our colleagues from a certain country in this room, but we do want to say that he exemplified what we try to teach at Cambridge, which is that when you have uh, a great success, as I think we've had, you talk about the team. So I'd like to introduce our team. The director of the Cambridge Police Executive Program, who uh, for the the second 10 years of evidence-based policing, when all the evidence I will present at the close of the conference on Wednesday shows that evidence-based policing just started taking off geometrically. Uh, Heather has been uh, the central person here, uh, joined very shortly thereafter by Sir Dennis O'Connor, who not only chairs our International Advisory Board, but also serves on the Thesis Review Committee and is well known to all of our graduates in recent years, as is our deputy director and uh, former uh, chief constable of both Thames Valley Police and the, and the NPIA, National Policing Improvement Agency, uh, Dr. Nehru. Uh, Dr. Barak Ariel, our lecturer in experimental criminology, uh, who has, uh, I think, launched more uh, of the randomized control trials in policing that are now on Dr. Nehru's registry of such things. Uh, than anybody else in the room, myself included. Uh, I'm really jealous, and I don't know what I'm going to do about this, but uh, I'm going to work on it. Very glad to have Dr. Jeffrey Barnes back from Western Australia and continuing to serve with us, as he has done in various capacities from various universities uh, uh, over the last decade uh, as affiliated lecturer with our program, uh, as well as Dr. Katrin Miller-Johnson, uh, who has uh, supervised many of the uh, important contributions through thesis research that have been published coming out of uh, this program. Uh, Dr. Timothy Koop is uh, also in that category of someone who has helped to produce many publications, if not photographs. Um, and the Cambridge team of um, legitimacy researchers that has been led by Justice Tankapi uh, is doing remarkable work. You'll hear from uh, a few of the more recent uh, uh, research projects uh, during the forthcoming conference. Very pleased that in this last 10 years we have added uh, a number of academics, people who have been police executives, who also have master's degrees in the field, and who have been outstanding supervisors. The first on the team being Crispian Strachan, uh, and he was followed by John Parkinson, who had recently graduated from this program uh, as uh, the uh, first chief constable to join us uh, in the team. Uh, from the program, uh, followed by, uh, uh, more recently, the former Chief Constable of West Midlands, Chris Sims. Very pleased to have him with us on our team and to help our thinking about integrating the different strands of evidence-based policing. Uh, very special to have the uh, cavalry riding to the rescue with our record number of thesis students this year, with uh, close to 100 master's theses being done in, in MST. That is a first in the history of Cambridge. Uh, it used to be that I think uh, maybe across the university in every subject they would have that many master's theses done in one year, but that was uh, a while back. David uh, Bailey has uh, been uh, a great contributor to research on policing in India, and we're very pleased to have him join us uh, for these purposes, as well as to have Dr. Caroline Angel uh, who is the first psychiatric nurse to receive a PhD in criminology and certainly the first nurse to be on our faculty uh, here at Cambridge. Molly Slothauer, all the way th from the office of the mayor in New York City, where they continue to drive crime down uh, without doing anything unpleasant to anybody. Uh, so well, well done in New York and well done uh, for New Zealanders to uh, be equally nice in working on a wide range of, of topics uh, on our team. Uh, and, and from a, a place where it can often be really hard to be nice, uh, we have Jeanette Kerr working with us uh, primarily now in Hong Kong, uh, but coming to us as our first Australian 
uh, MST um, serving uh, uh, chief officer uh, who was part of a cohort of brilliant people uh, who continue to carry evidence-based policing forward uh, in Australia. Uh, but um, most important, I have to say uh, to uh, our guest speaker, our keynote speaker tonight, uh, the Deputy Commissioner for Management of the Hong Kong Police Force, this beachhead that we have with evidence-based policing uh, in, shall we say, the center of gravity of the world's population uh, is uh, a very important development uh, as we look back over the last 20 years of evidence-based policing. And uh, I have to say that we um, are very fortunate to have the kind of investment uh, that one major police force has made on a scale that has not been made uh, in any other police agency uh, in their engagement with evidence-based policing, uh, certainly uh, through the, the Cambridge course. Uh, and so uh, with no further ado, I would like to invite uh, our distinguished keynote speaker, uh, the Deputy Commissioner for Management of the Hong Kong Police Force, uh, Ms. Winnie Chu, to walk very slowly up here while I get my screen down and put up hers. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, as soon as we get that done, yes, please join me in welcoming Deputy Commissioner. <laughs> Professor Sherman, Professor Strang, Sir Dennis, members of the International Advisory Board, and fellow police professionals, good evening. Thank you for inviting me here to speak at the 11th Cambridge International Conference on Evidence-Based Policing. When I received the invitation from Professor Sherman last December, I felt much honored and privileged to be able to share some of my thoughts on evidence-based policing and management in particular, my reflections on the unprecedented collaboration between the University of Cambridge, Institute of Criminology, and the Hong Kong Police College. You probably have noticed that there is a large contingent of participants from Hong Kong attending this conference today. Most of them are police officers who are attending the first or second year of the Masters of Studies in Cri Applied Criminology and Police Management which is taught partly in Hong Kong and partly in Cambridge. Since 2017, the Hong Kong Police Force has embarked on a journey of evidence-based innovation in policing. I'll be using about 20 minutes to tell this story, but before that, I would like to give a brief update regarding Hong Kong and the Hong Kong Police Force. Hong Kong is a special administrative region of China that enjoys a high degree of autonomy as enshrined in the basic law, the constitutional document governing the political, judicial, economic framework as, as well as guarantee its capitalistic way of life. The basic law is an embodiment of the doctrine of one country, two systems, which guarantees the rights and freedoms of people in Hong Kong, and is underpinned by the impartial rule of law and an independent judici judiciary, Hong Kong has maintained the common law system with the power of final adjudication, which is vested in the court of final appeal. With a population of about 7.4 million living in just over 1,100 square kilometer, Hong Kong is one of the most densely populated cosmopolitan cities in the world. Yet 40% of its land is actually protected country parks. So you're never too far away from a country trail in this thriving city. Hong Kong is rated the world's freest economy consecutively for past 24 years, according to the 2018 Index of Economic Freedom Report. It is also the third leading global financial center, only after London and New York, according to the Global Financial Center Index. Needless, needless to say, safety and security are prime factors for the successful development of an international city. 
The vision of the Hong Kong police is to maintain Hong Kong as the one of the safest and most stable societies in the world. According to the World Justice Report, Hong Kong ranked fourth on the rule of law index globally. It came fifth in the safety and security in the legatum prosperity index and eighth in the reliability of police services index in the global competitiveness report issued by the World Economic Forum in 2017. very well, sorry about that. Locally, last year, Hong Kong saw a continual reduction in recorded crimes with 7% drop as compared with 2016 and a reduction of 26% as compared with 2012. The crime rate at 758 crime cases per 100,000 population was in fact the lowest recorded since 1971. There were only 163 robbery last year a staggering 74% drop as compared with 2012. Homicide cases remain low at 24, with the majority stemming from domestic disputes. In the recent police satisfaction survey and public opinion survey conducted independently by the University of Hong Kong earlier this year, 84% of the respondents were satisfied with the overall performance of the Hong Kong police and 79% of respondents have confidence in the Hong Kong police. Furthermore, 92% said they felt safe during daytime, and 80% of the respondents said they felt safe during nighttime. The consistently high ratings in both international and local survey show that Hong Kong is a safe and secure city with good law and order. These accomplishments would not be possible without the professional policing by our dedicated officers and the joint community efforts in crime prevention and crime reduction. But is there a picture all rosy for the Hong Kong police? Certainly not. Whilst we can count on our achievements, there are numerous present and future challenges that we're battling with. Being an international financial center with efficient communication and transportation networks, Hong Kong is not immune to the threats of terrorism. Whilst the terrorist threat level of Hong Kong remains moderate, the Hong Kong police has been working to strengthen our counter-terrorism capability and preparedness, enhancing the capability of emergency response and handling of major incidents. For instance, a new interdepartmental CT unit called the ICTU was established earlier this year on top of the existing CT framework to enhance the coordination work on counter-terrorism. It provides a dedicated interdepartmental <coughs> CT platform for monitoring the global terrorism trend and CT measures, strengthening intelligence gathering and exchange, reviewing CT strategies, developed specialized training on CT, and optimizing various emergency response plans. Another challenge is the threat of cybersecurity and the rise of cyber crimes. This is a fast developing area that knows no international boundary. With the rapid advancement of information technology, cybersecurity threats and technology crimes are becoming increasingly complicated. The shift from traditional hard crimes like robberies and burglaries to cyber crimes, ranging from simple ocean frauds to multi-million dollar scam, is evident in Hong Kong. Separately, there has been a noticeable increase in security risk disrupting confidentiality, integrity, and availability of computer systems. The Cybersecurity and Technology Crime Bureau has been striving to enhance and expand its capability in different areas, including detecting syndicated and sophisticated technology crimes, conducting timely cyber threat audits and analysis, as well as enhancing response capability against major cybersecurity incidents or massive cyber attacks and strengthening relevant thematic researches. <coughs> Yet another challenge is the policing of a plethora of public order events. Last year, there were over 10,000 public meetings, public processions held in Hong Kong, with a daily average of 27 public order events, big and small, 
that Hong Kong police have to facilitate and regulate. Most of these events were peaceful and uneventful. But there were more radical ones in recent years involving violence, such as the Mongkot riot in 2016, with over 100 police officers injured. In an increasingly polarized society, antagonistic feelings towards authority, including police, especially amongst the younger generations, have been rising. Some were attempts to portray police as the political tool and suppressing people's rights and freedoms and launch humiliating campaigns against police officers with a view to undermining police legitimacy and credibility. The operating environment of police has become increasingly complex and easily politicized. This presents not only an operational challenge, but a management challenge of building trust with the community and engaging staff to ensure high level of performance and staff morale. People are our greatest asset in the Hong Kong police. We have nearly 30,000 police officers, 4,300 civilian staff, and 3,000 part-time auxiliary police officers. The recruitment, training, development, performance and integrity management of our staff are crucial to the success of our organization. And this financial year, we are aiming to recruit about 1,600 police constables and 260 police inspectors. As we only recruit police officers at these two entry levels, we need to train officers not only to meet day-to-day -day policing demands, but we also need to manage talents proactively and develop them throughout the career to ensure robust succession planning of police leaders. Hence, we take a strategic approach in managing our human resources so as to build capacity with the right people, with a flexible mix of competencies and the commitment to pursue the Hong Kong police vision and common purposes. We consider people as one of our service excellence drivers, with leadership, culture, partnership and resources being the other four excellence drivers under the force quality management framework. One of our strategic directions in the Hong Kong Police three-year strategic action plan is to enhance personal and professional qualities of force members. In order to ensure this strategic direction, one of the key projects is to strengthen collaborations with local and overseas institutions to raise professional standards. Locally, the Hong Kong Police College has been pursuing recognition of qualifications through the Hong Kong Qualification Framework, which is a seven-level hierarchy covering qualifications on the academic, vocational, and continuation education sectors. Our foundation training programs and detective training programs for constables and sergeants are now accredited at QF Level 4, the same level as associate degree or high diploma. And corresponding training programs for inspectors are accredited at level five, the same level as bachelor degree. Last year, we further attained accreditation at QF level six, the same level as a master's degree for the International Executive Development in Policing Program, which is jointly run by the Hong Kong Police College and the Canadian Police College for Superintendents. Currently, we are operating 11 different training programs, ranging from QF Level 3 to Level 6, with strong emphasis on the well-balance of theory and practices. We've entered into agreements with lo different local and overseas universities and tertiary education institutions on the credit accumulation and transfer arrangement, so as to encourage our officers to pursue lifelong learning. Currently, 62% of our superintendents and above have master's degree with 17% of the degrees relating to police, including criminology, security, public order, and police management. Around 23% of our inspectorate officers have master's degree with 5% of these relating to policing. Whilst postgraduate qualifications are not the pre prerequisite for promotion to higher ranks, we believe that in a globalized, fast-changing, and knowledge-rich environment, 
it will be of great benefit to the officers personally to pursue continuous learning, and for the Hong Kong police organizationally and capacity and capability building. The Hong Kong Police College has been exploring opportunities for international collaboration with first-class institutions, such as the renowned Institute of Criminology of the University of Cambridge. I think ladies and gentlemen here might have interest to know how the Hong Kong Police College and the University of Cambridge get together for the unprecedented collaboration on running the master's degree program in applied criminology and police management. Although we did have a couple of officers who had completed this prestigious and demanding program on their own, the Hong Kong Police Force did not have any specific connection with the University of Cambridge before. The story of our collaboration started at the same series of conference as today, three years ago, when the representative of the Hong Kong Police College attended the evidence-based policing conference in July 2015 in Cambridge to explore if there were any opportunities for further cooperation. We later initiated a face-to-face -face meeting in November 2015 in Hong Kong. Following rounds of discussions, a full agreement was signed in Hong Kong between the two parties, which formalized the detailed arrangements about the collaboration in November 2016. As this was the first progress postgraduate course ever operated by the police or a government department in Hong Kong in partnership with an overseas university, hurdles and obstacles ranging from legal issues and emission systems to logistic difficulties were expected and encountered. However, with the concerted efforts of the University of Cambridge and the Hong Kong Police College, we finally and successfully registered the course with the Education Bureau in Hong Kong in December 2016. We then kickstart our mission together with Cambridge and commence our first semester in Hong Kong in May 2017. The Hong Kong Police is committed to nominating 12 qualified officers annually to attend the course with full sponsorship covering tuition fees and other expenses. Competition for the places is extremely keen. We critically examine officers' overall performance, service and training profile, as well as their long-term potential when considering their nominations. We also ensure that every nominee will meet the high academic standard of Cambridge. At the same time, as an open and inclusive organization, we also welcome applications from serving officers from all ranks, and auxiliary police included, to enroll at their own expenses with a view to encouraging lifelong learning. Additionally, we have invited other law enforcement agency, such as the Customer Excise Department, the Correctional Services Department, and the Independent Commission Against Corruption to send their officers to join the program. For all officers who have succeeded in being selected by their agencies and passed the stringent requirements of the University of Cambridge, arrangement will be made for them to receive full pay study leave of six weeks per year. That is 12 weeks in total for the whole program, irrespective of whether they are fully sponsored or self-financed. Currently, there are 27 Hong Kong officers studying in the 2017 cohort and 22 officers in the 2018 cohort. Recently, we have learned that some officers from Australia, India, and Singapore have indicated their interest to join the Hong Kong cohort. The Hong Kong Police College is well positioned to welcome overseas <coughs> law enforcement agencies to join the program, making it a truly international hub for world-class police education and training where present and future leaders can exchange professional knowledge, experience, and expertise. With more officers coming from different jurisdictions, we believe that the Hong Kong cohort will become a focal point and a melting pot to facilitate the study of evidence-based policing in Asia-Pacific region. The international and cross-culture setting in Hong Kong will no doubt add another valuable dimension for officers and the pursuit of professional learning, research, and networking. 
The University of Cambridge is one of the best and well-renowned universities with over 800 years of prestigious history. Its Institute of Criminal Criminology is a leading faculty of applied criminology and related areas. We are very fortunate to pioneer this first overseas partnership with the Institute with tremendous support from Professor Sherman and his colleagues. The Master of Studies in Applied Criminology and Police Management focuses on the application of evidence-based research to address practical policing problems. This is an area that we are very excited about, as we believe that in the long run, this investment will enhance how police leaders and managers in the Hong Kong police made informed decisions on policies, strategies, and practices. The proactive and focused approach of evidence-based policing is not only useful in crime prevention and reduction, it can also play a pivotal role in addressing management issues, such as organization culture, human resource management, use of technology, and delivering of quality service. The collaboration with the University of Cambridge not only brings professional knowledge to policing by adopting scientific approaches, but also allow our future leaders to gain intellectual fluency to better understand and deal with policing problems. Officers will be equipped with critical thinking, enhanced awareness of current problems, and the ability <coughs> to analyze challenging issues in the field, as well as the ability to use acquired knowledge to propose new hypotheses, identify and address real policing and management problems. It will also promote reflective and innovative thinking who have roles in the formulation of policies, strategies, and practices. The application of evidence-based policing will benefit the organization from tackling challenges which need to be addressed by multifaceted methods with instrumental value to delivering more effective and efficient policing. The use of a proactive and problem-oriented approach using statistical analysis, research methods, and scientific testing can also assist officers to solidly account for their decisions and demonstrate the value and effectiveness of police programs. In a rapidly changing and increasingly demanding operating environment, police decisions that are based on best available evidence will enhance accountability and enlist government and public trust and support, especially in the use of valuable resources. As Deputy Commissioner overseeing the management side of the House, I'm glad to see that year two students of Hong Kong Police have not only set their research areas on operational policing, but also on management issues, including morale enhancement and integrity management. For instance, an officer will research on improving in-service training methods for positive attitudes towards integrity management. One officer will study the relationship between morale and leadership of supervisory officers, whilst another will study morale of detectives or how management can make a difference. Another officer will study the use of Facebook to measure and enhance morale. All will be using the evidence-based research method learned during the program. I hope that this year, next, this time next year, our officers will be ready to share their research findings. In the coming years, I believe that we will see more papers on both operational and management-related issues by our final year students. We will facilitate and support the research of our officers. Commanding officers will be approached to, su will be approached to suggest areas of research which can benefit local policing as well as enhancing organizational management, so as to ensure that the researchers are relevant and in the force best interest. With the increasing number of officers taking up the evidence-based research studies, I hope that our research capability can be built up and there is a gathering momentum in applying evidence-based policing in Hong Kong. Professional management is crucial in an organization, especially for a large police organization like the Hong Kong Police. Through the Cambridge Master Programs, officers can reflect on 
and explore how they handle a myriad of management issues, such as recruitment, selection, training and development, performance management, integrity management, morale management, resilience building, use of technology, and community engagement. This can help build capability and capacity to tackle present and future policing challenges. As mentioned earlier, people are our greatest asset. Without good management of our human asset, who are going to take care of and solve the policing problems of today and tomorrow? Through instilling a culture of reflection and innovation, equipping our officers with first-rate education and training, and inspiring them to make a difference with their knowledge and commitment, I believe that the future of our organization will be in good hands. <coughs> the collaboration with Cambridge University does not only open up our journey in evidence-based policing, it has also brought benefits to Hong Kong police in the arena of international collaboration. Through building up networks and partnership with local and overseas law enforcement agencies and world-class academia, there can be further sharing of evidence-based researches on what works in addressing real policing problems. Apart from intellectual interactions, our officers will also treasure this invaluable opportunity to enhance understanding and friendship amongst professionals from all over the world. I hope our collaboration with the University of Cambridge and our pursuit of evidence-based policing will develop a new breed of future police leaders who have the intellectual and analytical ability as well as an agile and innovative mind to overcome present, emergent, and future unknown policing challenges in the next decade. In closing, thank you once again for inviting me here today, and may I wish you all great health and a fruitful year ahead. And do come to visit us in Hong Kong when you can spare the time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think that in the current weather conditions, <laughs> uh, this presentation might appear to be irrelevant. But one of our key themes, of course, is planning for the future and future challenges that may arise even as early as later next week. So in the event that some may, rain may fall, okay. we invite you to use a Cambridge Police Executive Program umbrella yeah. as your shield. Yes, I'm so. sure I'll be well protected. Okay.